Hey guys, what's up? It's Julia. Welcome back to A Girl and Two Cats. Um, this video is going to be um, on a more serious note. I want to go ahead and give a warning ahead of time that I will be discussing suicide and mental health. So if um, you are not in a place to hear these kind of things um, or if it's a trigger, I would recommend you to turn off the video but come back and watch it when you are at a point where you can actually handle it because I will be sharing some vital information in this video. So this week, September 9th through September 15th is Suicide um, Awareness Prevention Week. Um, suicide is an epidemic in, you know, not just in the United States of America, but around the world. Um, I don't really think people realize how much of an epidemic it is and that, I mean I don't really want to use that word but it's, it's what it is according to the CDC um, in 2016 death reports um, over 45,000 people in the United States alone committed suicide I'm going to share my suicide attempt story um, like I said at the beginning of the video if suicide is something that is a trigger for you uh please do not continue watching this video but please come back and watch it when you are in a better state of mind so i guess I, what i need to do is kind of rewind from the and start from the beginning with my depression and um, anxiety when i was eight years old i was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at that time i was also dealing with um my biological parents coming in and out of my life. So it was kind of like a triple whammy with that. Um, and on top of that, I started, you know, developing anxiety. When I was 13 years old, um, I had my first, I guess what you call suicidal ideation. I didn't have a plan or anything like that, but I just thought in my mind, I don't want to live anymore. And I hated that feeling. At 13 years old, I just, I knew it wasn't right. Um, and I received, um, inpatient treatment and from then, from there, I went to a residential treatment center for four months. Um, and I continued, um, receiving counseling and going to inpatient treatments up until the age of 18. In, uh, May of 2015, I got a roommate and... The, re the relationship with the roommate was not healthy. There were some things said, not just by me, but by her also. And it really put my stress level uh, on, the, on the edge. I moved out um, of the apartment that my roommate and I were living in. I moved back to my hometown um, in October of 2015 my anxiety and my depression it was just building up and i didn't really you know vent or anything i didn't really take care of it properly um i was like a soda can just being shook and shook and shook until finally i burst in january of 2016 um i was you know i had high i had started a new job um i already had aurora and i just got adopted oliver and um, finally, you know, my mom and I, we got into a really bad argument. It was just the, the camel that broke the straw's back. So January 20, hi, January 27th of 2016, I tr attempted suicide by overdose. I had taken a, a whole bunch of my medications all at once. And then I turned my phone off because I didn't want people bothering me. I knew I didn't want to be on my phone. I just turned it off. And sometime in somewhere in that time, I apparently turned my phone back on and I texted my best friend, Kara, telling her what I had done, even though intentionally I had not done wanted to tell anybody. So her and her husband, John, they called um, 911 and the EMTs came, and of course, I don't really remember any of this. Um, I remember, you know, hi, some, getting some of my, you know, stomach pumped or whatever, and 
then, you know, I remember waking up in a hospital room, but that's really all I remember. After, you know, I was in the hospital, I received inpatient treatment and my, after I was released, I was like, you know what, when I get home, I'm going to try it again. I'm going to, but I'm going to do it right this time. But at the time I was staying part of the time with a church member and we went to go pick up her grandkids from daycare who I was very, very close to. And seeing those kids is what made me not want to do it again. 2016 was a very, very rough year. I dealt with intense depression, intense anxiety. I didn't want to be at home alone. I didn't want to, I wanted to be out of my house. I would do everything in my power to be out of the house. Then towards the end of the year, um, I got involved with a guy who led me on for about five, about five or six months. Um, and it, it, it really hurt. You know, I was in a vulnerable state of mind and he took advantage of that. But when 2017 rolled around, I made the decision. I, I'm not the kind of person who makes New, Year, New Year's resolutions. But 2017, I did. I said, you know what? This is going to be my year. I'm going to be, it's going to be so much better. And in February of 2017, I joined Youth Move Arkansas, um, the River Valley chapter. And at that time, I had no idea how much that group was going to change my life. I, you know, met a lot of people who were passionate about mental health awareness like I am. Um, and our age group was 13 to 25. I was the oldest out of the group. So in a way, I was also a mentor to the younger youth. I have had at least three of the people that were in my group involved with me tell me that they feel comfortable talking to me and venting to me because they know with me I'm not going to judge and they can speak freely and they have a safe it's a safe place to talk and and that's exactly how I wanted it I wanted to be that person in their young lives that I wish I desperately wish that I had I use my experiences um, to be able to help people. I remember being 12 years old, crying in my bathroom at school, thinking, why am I going through this? Why am I dealing with so all this crap? Like, I don't get it. And you know, now it makes a little bit more sense because I've been able to help people and I want to continue to help people. And with that being said, um, many of the people who watch my videos on YouTube are friends with me on Facebook. But if you're not, I have a you, not a YouTube, a Facebook page called A Girl and Two Cats that you can message. Feel free, any of you, to message me, because I even if we have never met, even if you have never seen me or talked to me, and the only place you've ever seen me is these, this YouTube channel, I want to be that person that you can turn to because it is a judge-free zone and everything like that. I want to be able to help people and i say this all the time but back in 2016 i had that state of mind that i'm never going to get happy there's no light at the end of the tunnel but here we are two and a half years later and i'm like there is a light at the end of the tunnel you know i still have my bad days like i'm human that's gonna happen but for the most part i'm really content with my life and <laughs> it's a really surreal feeling i mean next month in Oct october will be an entire year. I have not been in the hospital, not even emergency room visits. I have only had to go to the doctor like twice. And one was for, for hurting my wrist, it wasn't even for sickness. And any of you that know me knows that being in the hospital is basically, has been my everyday life. But now that I'm, I'm going on a year, a year is a record, you guys. Like, I'm so happy and I'm so proud of myself. And you know, like I said, I'm gonna have my bad days. I am human, but I've kind of used this motto, like, in a way, it's okay to cry for five minutes, not a literal five minutes, but then I just need to pick up myself up and move the heck on. Because, you know, sitting and dwelling on things that I cannot personally change, that I have no control over, is not worth it. I don't wanna waste my time on something that I try to fix something I can't control, that I have no power to control. But I really encourage you 
if you don't have someone to talk to, someone that you can vent to, I'm here for you. I may not know you, you may be a complete stranger, but you know what? I'm here to listen. If it's two o'clock in the morning and you need to talk, I will stay up with you to talk to make sure that you are okay. I don't care if I have to get up early the next that morning to go to work or to babysit because your life matters more than my job, than my babysitting job. I want to make sure that you are okay and that you have a safe place that you can talk. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this week. Um, next week, I will be back to my you know happier, more cheerful self, but this is something that is real. Suicide prevention is real. Suicide is real. And I'm not going to sugarcoat things. And people are like, you know, this isn't the right time to talk. And not just with suicide, but other things. If we don't talk about it now. When are we ever going to talk about it? So, you know, now's the time to talk. I love you guys, and I will see you guys next week. Mwah.